It's the month of January, and I'm making my little theme picture for my calendar month. And I'm inviting you to come along with me. So let's get these little birds flying and skiing through the snow. I have an example here that I've made previously, because this will be a little series of monthly pages with our little bird characters. So I will start with a new layer on top, and I'm just going to choose my pencil. I will. Go to sketching. I like the 6B or HB pencil. I'll go with that. Let's see the size. All right, it's okay. And just to give you an idea of how I sketch this, very simple because we're going with a few basic shapes. So here we have an oval. As you'll see here, we have another oval. Here we have like a triangle shape or a cone shape. A triangle shape for the beak, two more little triangles. Then we'll have our little legs like this, and our little feet. And then, of course, we'll fill in the details. Anyway, this just gives you the general idea of our little bird character. To begin with our sketch, I already have a rough sketch that I did previously. I'm just going to. Change the opacity. That way, I can see what I'm drawing. I did this one very quickly before, but here, because the sketch is already done, I'm going to start with the line art. Okay, so here goes our little shape. As you'll see, there's the oval again. Here is our little triangle. So I'm not following the. The sketch to a T. I did it a while ago, so I may want to alter it a little bit. All right, our beak will be over here. Our little triangle. We have a little oval, and our wing. So before it was going out a bit. This time, it will go forward because little birdie is carrying something. Erase this little part. That way, we see the oval a bit better. All right, and then moving on to our little legs. So remember our little triangles. Here I can even make the triangle over the body because this leg would be in front. And moving on to add his little boots. So the boots are very simple, like that. So this is kind of whimsical, cute, a little unrealistic. Which adds to the cuteness. It's very simple. I'm adding two little lines, so it looks kind of like a sled. All right, I will add a few little drops, as if he's splashing. I'm going to make a little circle oval, actually, and then his little pointy ends. There we go. I will erase this little line. There we go. Okay, so our number one little character is almost finished. Here is his other wing. So I have part of his wing here, as if it were his little thumb, and the other part. I'm gonna make it like this. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and make these lines really straight by just holding down. Second, and it straightens it out. But I'm not going for perfection in this style. I like the kind of very natural look, and I prefer my lines a little crooked. Then it shows that it's hand drawn. I'm going to add a few little lines here, little texture for my birdie. All right. Here, oops! I forgot something very important. Going to erase just a few of them because I will add him. I will include a little scarf. He's in winter after all, and it's cold. So, okay, moving on. My scarf will continue here. And I encourage you to use whatever medium you enjoy. Here, I'm going to widen this part a little. 
or I could do like this and add a little piece. There you go. And his scarf is blowing in the wind. The part of his scarf is even longer. I think this is cute. It kind of adds to the unrealism of the picture. You can make little patterns if you want. I'm going to make little straight lines and zigzag lines. There we go. I might just add a few, not for the whole thing. Maybe a few here. Zigzag. Just for a little added fun. Okay, now for some erasing. So you just erase the parts of the bird's tail because they'll be behind the scarf. All right, number one character is all done. Let's move on to the second one. Okay, here we have, again, our little oval shape. It's almost a, oops, I want a little bit, I'm not getting my oval totally good here, am I? I've done this so many times and I still need to do it. Does this look like a little fish? I don't know. Okay, so normally my oval would be like this. So I may even I like my little tail like that. And now I can erase these little lines. Those were just, if it helps you, then please go ahead and do your oval to begin with. Here, he, this one, little birdie is flying. So either I could make his wing go this way or I could make it go this way. So he could have one wing going out this way, out that way. Let's try with that. His beak a little bit higher here. So again, we're just working with the shapes over here, another oval and our triangle, which I'll make a little bit wider. And for this one, I'm going to add him a little wintry hat. So I'll erase a little part of the head. So you may be in the month of January, if you're seeing this video today and feeling like drawing a cute little wintry picture, but you could also be maybe in the summer, in the middle of summer, and you still feel inspiration to draw a little birdie because outside is so hot. All right, I have my little balloon tie here and I'm going to draw it's winter time, I'm going to draw a little pine, pine branch. So the pine branches, there's not really any rhyme or reason. You just make your little lines going out and in, out and in, any way you like. It looks almost like a feather. Now I can draw my balloon. All right, I wonder if this line should be in front and then this one in the back. Okay, so we have our two little birdie characters. I'm going to add another layer for the background. It's not very necessary to make another layer, but just in case I want to use it for something and I want my characters on a new layer, it's a lot easier to make it beforehand rather than after. For example, right here, I'm going to make this hill all in one go. To be able to do that, it's so much easier to do it in one go. Okay, I'm going to add another little one. There we go. And that way I can really easily erase my line that goes behind without worrying about the top picture. One benefit to using layers and to using Procreate. I want to make a few little, little dead branches. As you see, I'm not totally following my, my guides. Here, I'm going to make little pine trees. So I'm just going like that. And then again, like the pine branches, just going in, out, very randomly, totally hand-drawn style. Again, I even leave out some little spaces. Okay, like that. One more, I'll make a little smaller baby one. Or he's 
further away. So already our little picture is starting to take shape. Here I'm going to add another little tree. Here we have another little dead, dead bush. Another one here. And dispersed around, I'm going to add a couple little pine branches. So sometimes I go this way, sometimes I'll go the other way, just for variety. Sometimes I'll join them, sometimes I'll make them single ones like that. And I like adding, for the winter months, I like adding little berries. There we go. Another one here. Again, some this way, some that way. So I'm doing a whole series on uh, these little birdie characters and one for each month. So feel free to check out my other videos, my other classes, and if you do them all, you'll have the whole series. Okay, moving on to our little ribbon. I will use a new layer. Again, in case I ever wanna change it, or maybe I might want to animate a part of it. And you see, it's not even straight. I like that. I will select it like this, and I will move it by using the moving tool. Maybe move it a tiny bit this way and to center it. All right. So let's see how this looks without our sketch, shall we? There we go. Now it doesn't show much difference. It really helps if you're using the iPad to name your layers. These are my, this is my main pick, I will call it. Is that right? Yes. Here would be my background. So you just click on it once, go up here, rename. You can either type it up like this. This one is our text, right? Or you click on it again, rename, and you can just type it in. Text, here we go. Rename, see if you click in here, it brings up the keyboard. All right main pie. Ah, I will put picture. It wants me to put the whole word. And here is our sketch, which I don't need anymore, so I can delete that, save some space. Okay, that was our little birdie shape, which I don't need either. All right, this one neither. So, we have our final line art picture for our month of January. Now I just planned a few colors just to have a quick idea of my of my um, palette that I wanted to use for this picture. As you'll see for this uh, picture, I'm going very simple. I've chosen one, two, three, basically four colors to work with. And I'll take off this layer and we're going to get started. I add a new layer underneath the main picture. That way, any colors are add, I will still be able to see my black lines. And I have my palette over here. I have my main palette here. I'll start with my sky. So if you want, you can even label that one. I will choose a brush. Okay, I have my favorite brushes. I like using Rusty Pencil. I like it because it kind of has a texture to it. You see, it's not perfectly, um, it's not perfectly smooth or airbrushed or anything. I kind of like the, again, the organic feel to it. So I'm going to go ahead and start like this. And I'm just coloring over the whole thing, which is okay because after I can add the other colors I need on top of it. And I'm not going to do my whole page. I'm just going to kind of make a little shape like this. 
I don't want anything too perfect. So you look if you're happy with it. Not really any rhyme and reason to it, except I like the little bulges. Kind of looks like a little cloud if you want. I will even color behind. Another reason is in case I want to move something around from my main picture, like maybe I'd want to move this little guy on this side. I can always freely do that afterwards because I'll have my full sky colored. Okay, so it's really easy. You just strokes, use your strokes the way you want. So I think comparing this with color pencils, I like the pencil look of it, but it's a lot quicker because with a pencil, you don't have the option of making your brush a bigger size. And if you're using watercolor, that might go even quicker. So this is kind of the in-between, I think. All right, moving on to our little characters. I had him white. Let's see what I had done. Yeah, I had both of my little characters white and I added some pink for their hat and scarf. So let me find my pink on my palette. I will make a new layer. I'll make the size much smaller because this is very much smaller details compared to the sky. So I think I'm going to go with my pink scarf and leaving out the lines white. I didn't draw all the shapes here. I might include them afterwards. Sometimes I plan out my palettes beforehand. Sometimes I just let it flow, let inspiration lead as I'm doing my picture. But since I am doing this class, I wanted to make sure that it will look good in the end. Many times I have to try out different palettes, different colors, until I'm really satisfied with the end result. So since I didn't want to have to do that for you, especially if you're just using color pencils or paint, that would be a bother for you to have to switch in the middle of it just because I changed my mind and wanted to change color. If you're on Procreate, that's not a problem at all. I want to encourage you that you can still make really cute, fun little things just by learning some of the basics. Okay, so we have our little scarf here and I'm going to make this guy's little hat. I think I'll go with like every other one pink. There you go, and this little part. I'm thinking of doing this part pink and I might leave the rest white. So because we have a background here, I will need to color in my white. If you're working on a white paper, then this is not necessary, but I will change my background color. Just give it a little, maybe gray, because gray is the most black. If I do black, I wouldn't be able to see my lines. Gray is safe because it won't alter the color of my pinks and blues. So I'm going to do another layer and I'm going to make my little birdies white. So don't worry about doing this step. You can skip it all together if you are using paper. And to let you know, yes, I'm the one giving you a class today, but artists keep on learning. Just because I'm the teacher today doesn't mean that I'm not going to be the student tomorrow. Because I love to practice and hone my skills. I want to improve. I like learning new tips and tricks to make it even better. I think this is good. So a new layer for this color. I'm going to go back to my palette and I will take the brown. So I might just decide on my own what I want to be brown. I'll make the tree trunks brown like that. And instead of these little skis, I will make his boots brown. But I'm going to make a new layer. I'll maybe change the... See, so I use my wheel there to my square there to just change the color, the shading of the color that I used because this one is not on my palette. 
And I'm going to use white for this little part because it will be in front of the sky, which is blue. There we go, same as my little water splashes. Snow splashes, maybe. I might even add a few more. I love some lines to be just very random like this. I think it's so cute. All right, now I'm going to add a new... Oh, you know what? Instead of a new layer, I'm going to use the same layer where I have my tree trunks. I'm going to go to my palette and pick the dark color. I want to see what it looks like with my sky. Because I had planned to do very dark, but I could also choose my medium dark. Let's see what I prefer. So I'm just going very quickly, actually not even doing perfect. I even prefer that, leaving a little white. Yeah, this color seems fine. I'm going to fix this one a little bit and add a little bit more white to it. So I just erase it and now I can go quickly without even thinking. The other way I was actually thinking about coloring in the lines. I could also, if I wanted to, add a little of the same green to these branches. Depends what type of art you're doing. Sometimes you do want it to be perfect and in the lines. I think this free flow has really been my thing for a little bit and so relaxing. All right, let's see what it looks like. Anything else that I needed to do? The little bushes are brown. So I'll try that. Which means I might even take them. I don't want so many lines. So maybe I might even take off the black line and keep the brown ones. I'll see how it looks. For this one, I am following it in case I want to just Take off the black lines. Okay. Well, there we go. Let's take off the... I think we're done. Let's put our background color back to white and see what it looks like. It's kind of cute. I know it's not very... not very colorful. Oh, I forgot one thing. I forgot one thing. Where's our balloon? So I go back to my balloon. And... I remember that we had little polka dots in our balloon. So any little shape or extra pattern that you can add really helps your picture to look even cuter. So we have our little birdie characters, but polka dots, for some reason polka dots just add uh, loads of cuteness. All right, so we have our little polka dots. And on top of my sky, I'm going to do one more layer and I'm going to add white snow. So if you want, there is a sh there is a brush. I think it's an Elements Driven Snow. Let's see how that looks. If not, I'll make my own. Okay, well that's okay. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. So look how cute. That just added tons of cuteness because they're little circles. I don't want too many. I'm going to try going this way. There we go. And I like it. So our coloring, very simple coloring, is finished. And our next step after this, we're going to add a little shading. So I still have all my layers here. I'm going to go to the way top of my colors and add a new layer. And I'm going to click on this N, which stands for normal. I want my layer to be multiplied. That way it can show all my colors. I'm going to choose a light gray. My brush, I'm going to go with rusty pencil, as usual, my favorite brush. And we're going to add just a little bit of, let's try out the brush, show oh, it's too big. I want to make like a pencil stroke. So fine enough, like that. And as of now, it seems quite light, but as you see, when we put it on color, it darkens a bit because it's multiplying it with the other colored layers. 
So we're going to do a little shading, just a little bit to make the picture stand out. Even a little bit smaller. I'm going to add, start by adding a little bit to the beak. I kind of go see what would be behind. This one would have a little shadow, a little shade from the here a little bit because it's having the shadow of the wing. A little bit on this side. You might think that this is not going to do anything. And it's true, it doesn't make a big difference at all. But when you see the end result and you compare the two, so I'm doing a little bit on the folds here. I like doing the corners a little bit too. And I'm making very small little strokes. Doesn't have to be big strokes at all. I like the small little strokes like this because it makes it look more hand drawn. If you had a pencil or even watercolor, paint, crayon, it would all look a little bit rough like this, which is what I'm going for here. Maybe I'll even, I'm going to change the opacity, maybe add a little bit. This part is a little bit behind. This one would be in front, again, a little bit behind. I'm taking the low parts a little bit behind. Again. So already you can see quite a difference. Let's continue with our bird. Sometimes I also add some texture, so like I could have done my little textures, which is the multiplied. I can add a few more. I like it that there's different shadings. And I'll do my little leg here because it's in the back. This one I'll put a little bit shading here in the boot. Maybe this part of the boot. I think it's done. This part is underneath. Maybe my little berries will have just a little bit of shade like that on the side. Again, especially since I didn't give them any color. And for my branches, I might just add a little bit to the middle. I don't really want the part that has no color. I just want the middle part to kind of stand out. I don't know if it gives it enough contrast or difference, but let's see. Maybe if I see the before and after, I'll notice a difference. Moving on to our trees. If you wanted to, you can always bring the color a little darker. I like the multiply version because it just takes the colors that you already have you don't have to do a different color for each object. All right, let's do this leaf while we're still with the dark. And if there's some gray that goes through like that, that's okay too. Gray is kind of a wintry color anyways. And it kind of fits my palette as well. Okay, here for the balloon, I will add a little shade. Maybe I'll do the whole, well, you know what, I'm going to Lighten it a little bit again. I like to add some shade to the balloon. Again, working with very small little hand strokes, not really planned or anything. And then the bottom part is, I repeat a little more in this part. Onto our little bird, the beak, I do the bottom part of the beak. So for these ones, I just chose to go with a little shading and less colors, just because I want this project to be very simple. Coloring is really a fun part, but it takes more time. So if you do have more time, of course, feel free to check some of my other videos where I dive more into the coloring, choosing the colors. Here I'll do a little bit on the side. I like how this part 
does make a difference. And this we can do the little out edges like that, maybe make even a few little dots to show that there's fluff everywhere. Here I can add a few little lines. So this one will have the same texture, the same little shapes, but lighter because I didn't add the black lines. If you wanted to for your wings, you can even add a little... My stroke is too big. Still too big. Okay, it's size one. I think I'm going to change the size. If you have a problem with the size, just change it here. It's still too big. I click on there. I'm going to change the minimum. And again, the down. <laughs> now it's really small. What you can do is also just change the pencil brush tool. It's a little feathery. If I do it on there, I would need to do it on these as well. All right, moving on to our background. I'm going to go here and do a new layer. So for the background, I chose a totally different layer. The other ones I can easily cut out in case I need to. I'm just going to add a little shading here. Oh, I like this because the pencil strokes, you can see them much better. Whereas for the other ones, I think I had made them a little bit too big. All right, well, I think we're all done. Now let's see what it looks like when we take off the shadows. Okay, here would be the shadows of the background. So here you can notice, you just add something. Now the shadings of the little characters, let's see, with and without. See how it just makes it stand out so much more? If you want a last little trick. You make a new layer and you go to overlay. So now it's on O for overlay. I'm going to pick white. Make sure my brush, okay, my brush is up there, good enough size, but I'm going to put down the opacity quite. Oops, okay, here we go, make sure it's... and it just gives a little lighting. So I did the multiply shadow on the down part of the of the scarf and now on the upper part of the scarf I'm going with a little highlight. I love this part to me it just changes everything especially when you're using a lot of color. Here again I'm going to use a little bit here for the boot I'm going to bring the opacity down because it's a dark color. Let's see, so I put it right in the middle. Just by doing that, it kind of helps the boot look roundish, doesn't it? Okay, same with our hat. I'm going to put a little bit in the middle. If I want, I'm going to up it, the opacity, bring down the, the size, and I can even do a little something like this. See how it just adds to the... Alright, well, I'm just playing around here, but <laughs> it's not really important details, but I really like them. Okay, our balloon. For our balloon, of course, if it was full color, it would make a big difference, but because it's only polka dots, I'm going to make my size really big and kind of make it lighter just on that part. So I don't know if it makes a big difference, but for our background, I'm going to try out something. I don't know if this will work. I'm going to just put a new layer and again overlay that one. So again, I make sure that on my background it has a different, a different layer for the shading and for the highlights. I'm just going to try and see if it looks nice if I highlight a little bit. Because there's kind of light, the sun reflects on the snow. So, 
when you do art, just flow with it, flow with what you want to try out. If it doesn't fit your style, doesn't suit your mood, then take it off. But I just like exploring. Hey, maybe this will work or, you know, I think it's just so fun to. Let's see. Okay, well, it's up to you if you want to leave it on or off. If you want to add the little white or not. But either way, we're totally done. So I'm so proud of you for spending this time with me. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you learned something, something new that you can try out for your next project. See you in the next class.